Hello. Hello. Is all of this working? There's me. Hello. Things are bouncing. Marty is just making an appearance. I think we're almost ready. Why is this camera? Let's not moan about the camera all stream. I wish this camera was better. My normal cameras are much nicer than this. But hey, hi everyone that's here. Let's talk about some games, shall we? Eventually. I said I was going to get Marty up. There he is. Of course, not in the position that he was about 10 minutes ago. And doing some uh, some lovely some lovely nail biting for you. But there he is. I understand. Maybe you're not interested in the games. Maybe you just come for, for the Marty. There he is. Uh, that's behind that. That's coming up. Everyone, audio and video fine? Brilliant. Hi, everyone that's here. I've, I feel like while I've been messing around trying to get Patreon to post things, it's still not working. It's still spinning. Apologies, patrons. You didn't get a post about this. But hey, it, it's not letting me post things. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Let's talk about some games of 2022. And yeah, as the title in the corner says, I'm, I'm going to try and keep it brief. But yeah, I've, I've got to at least mention a lot of games. I've tried to cut all of this down. But hey. I somehow look like a hologram. Oh no. I'm not, am I like, I'm disappearing more at the edges, aren't I? It's like the light and everything's not perfectly set up for all of this bit. It's all set up for me to be playing a game facing 90 degrees the other way. Uh, trying to get all of the settings like copied across here. Am I all wavery around the sides? I can't, um, I can't see stuff as clearly. I was supposed to hide all of this browser and everything, wasn't I? Here's the first game I'm going to talk about anyway. I, yeah, I, spoiler stream. 2022 is the time that I uh, revealed that I've been a hologram all along. But hey, as, as, as long as the videos are coming, hologram or not. So there's, there's a load of space there. This is what you get for changing the, the layout every single time that you do a stream. You should keep things the same sometimes. And the, the microphone is just about visible. Right, let's... I look, I look 3D. Well, that's good. That's a good change. I thought, like, I'll, I'll try and stay looking at the camera. Like, I, I keep looking over there, though. I've put the chat on the screen in front of me so that I don't have to keep looking over there, but I'm still doing it. Hey, everyone. Hey, Joseph. James, Jimway, Paul, how's it going? Monica, Anne, I'm sorry if I've uh, if I've missed you. As I said, I've been, uh, I've been messing about with settings and stuff this whole time. Breaking news for 2022. It's a hologram and stuff. Legacy of You. Oh, I wonder if that's going to be talked about. Hey, that's, that's going to be talked about. So, as I have been messing about with uh, this list... For ages, actually, when I was making like the top 10 of last year list, I started making uh, this list as well. And yeah, I've, I've been messing around with it loads and loads and loads. I probably would still change loads of things on it, but we've got we've got things to talk about. And spoilers, there's, there's going to be a top 10. Hey, if you're watching it back later and you're just like, I came here to talk about 10 games, no more, no less. I'll timestamp it, but. I'm going, to, I'm going to talk about more than 10 games, basically. I, I, I'm going to talk about, as well, if you're like, these, these aren't even coming out yet. These are just coming onto Kickstarter. Hey, I'm, I'm separating those out. We're, we're talking about things that are coming to Kickstarter this year first. Automaton. I, I knew I should have picked a different name. I've got a clue right in there. The Undaunted series. Will I will, would I like the Undaunted series, Paul? I've been sent some kind of Undaunted expansion. I've never played an Undaunted game, but it doesn't, uh, it doesn't work on its own. So I should uh, I should try and give it a go with uh, with some more stuff I imagine. Yeah, he's the the cleanest cat around. Eventually he'll settle down and pick a spot. Usually not facing you. He'll uh, he'll try and there you go. There's there's his usual stance. He might settle down a little bit. Oh, three sisters should be one as well. Extra honorable me honorable mention. It's about to arrive, so uh, I kind of haven't been seeing it. It's... On my list, but yeah, Three Sisters. It's going to be a great roll and write, I'm sure. I haven't played it yet. But right, I will try to be as, as brief as possible while still giving uh, giving the games their due. Back to cleaning again. <laughs> this this the whole thing that it's going to be. I was I was thinking of like a solo perspective, Paul. Because uh, as two-player, it's just no-go at, at all, right? It, it's a war-themed war war game. George Harrison did a song for that. Uh... 
yeah, I, th I think Three Sisters is very, very nearly here, and some of the games we'll talk about. And there's there's going to be a great like beginning of February uh, video for some exciting things that are here, and we'll play Boon Lake tomorrow and all sorts of stuff. But right, I'll I'll talk about a few things and intersperse with things. Final Girl is one that I should talk about as well. Uh, but yeah, we'll we'll pretend that it's in this browser. Uh, but yeah, F Final Girl is like hostage negotiator transformed into like a, a horror. Like a, you're you're the final girl in a horror movie, and you've got to survive and defeat the killer. Uh, it's it sounds like an amazing thing, and I've got all of Hostage Negotiator. I'm not good at Hostage Negotiator, but I think it's great. Uh, and um, I've thought like maybe we'll do a stream of the like the career mode of it at some point. It just feels like it could get kind of heavy, topic wise, especially with some of the hostage takers in Hostage Negotiator. They don't shy away from uh, just kind of. As you would expect, it's uh, it's a very thematic game. But yeah, I really, I I would love Final Girl. Like people have got season one now, right? And season two is on Kickstarter. Uh, I would love to get involved. It's just very very pricey, right? It's very very pricey. I'm not saying it shouldn't be. There's a lot of stuff in there. I'm just saying, for my funds right now, that's not getting funded by me anytime soon. Unfortunately, I would like it to be. So. But I'll talk about these things. These are things that are coming onto Kickstarter this year, and I've tried to whittle it down, but hey, I'm, I'm still going to go on about slightly more than 10 games. So Bot Factory is basically you know, you know, Mikado de Lisboa, Vital Lacerda, uh, as, as well as um, it being uh, co-designed, kind of stripped down Lisboa into a lighter, a still kind of a, a thinky, fillery kind of game. And... Uh, I really like the concept of that. He's doing it to Bot Factory now. Well, he's doing it to Kanban in Bot Factory. Uh, instead of making cars, we're making robots. Sandra is still prowling around, making sure that we're getting our work done. There's worker placement in different departments. You've got to get designs. You've got to get parts of bots. The parts are on a spinny wheel. That's not in Kanban yet. Uh, but hey, it, it could be amazing. And it's you know, as, as well... As I should say, it was Julian Pombo, uh, co-designed Mikado de Lisboa. Name wasn't springing to mind right away. But um, it's Joao... I learned how to pronounce as well, and I've forgotten already. Uh, Cantella Martins and Vitilla Serda have designed Bot Factory together. That should be coming to Kickstarter this year. And as well... Bot Factory... Oh, Bot Factory's big, uh, meatier than Mikado de Lisboa. See, it's hard to tell, right? Because I've only seen a video of Vital explaining it. And, you know, to Vital, all of Vital's games are it's simple. You, do, you just play a card and do a thing. What's complicated about this? Whereas, yeah, if, if you're not Vital Lacerda, there's a bit more to them than that. So bot, so it's uh, it's somewhere in between Mikado and Kanban. Kind of meat-wise, would you say? Oh, watch that, Paul. Gaming Rules has a video. Patreon access to Bot Factory. I've just been scrambling watching kind of little interview videos at the moment. Hey, Bonnie Crew. I don't know. I don't know anymore. I'm a hologram, apparently. Thanks for joining us, though. Oh, Project L is great. Like, that's... I don't know if the Kickstarter's coming to me, but hey, I, I did a video for the, the prototype of the expansion of Project Hell. It's a great game, and maybe we'll be doing something to one of their their next uh, Kickstarter game might be coming up in a second. Hey, Frederick! How's it going? Thanks for joining me from France. But yes, Bot Factory. And I don't know if it's coming to Kickstarter in 2022. It says 2022 on um, Board Game Geek, but Vital's next kind of great big game that it's, I think you can play test if you go and join his Discord is Inventions Evolution of Ideas. If that's coming to Kickstarter in 2022, hey, it's uh, it's right up on this list. But if it isn't, it'll be on next year's. Why not? Um, what's going on? Osprey are in here? Are you, are you just mentioning Osprey just just generally? Yeah, let's let's talk. There's there's a there's an Osprey game coming up later on. Not a Kickstarter, but hey, a Small City Deluxe Edition. Album VR makes very complex but kind of evolving uh, game starting with town center that's like a 3d uh, city builder you put blocks in your town and it kind of expands by itself it's an amazing uh, idea i still haven't done a video for it after all of these years it's a fantastic thing small city kind of takes that idea of um you know the, the sim city thing of putting commercial and residential and industrial uh, in various places and depending how you have uh, configured these things they will grow by themselves and evolve and uh, so 
Small City came out in, I think, 2016. Al Alwyn made the games by himself at that point still. And if you remember, like, Clinic, it used to be in a pizza box, uh, all kind of hand-cut, I think, by Alwyn. And then since he uh, does Kickstarter projects for his uh, various games, did uh, Clinic Deluxe Edition that I did a Kickstarter video for for a prototype. I've since uh, bought a, a final one that at some point I will get to. It's coming to Kickstarter. I think it's been pushed back to, like, June. But uh, as um, Clinic got all new art by Ian O'Toole, the magnificent Ian O'Toole, uh, Small City has got uh, magnificent art by Quan Chai Moria, who, yeah, just does amazing things. I just think of the, the copy of the... You know, he's done like a million games at this point, but I just think of the amazing work he did on the game. Uh, but yeah, it, it's coming out. It's getting new modules. It's getting all of this stuff. But hey, maybe it'll bring uh, Small City to a wider audience. I've played Small City... I got in on the first one where you had to pre-order the ones that he made, and uh, it kind of blew my mind. It's a very heavy game. Yeah, Town Center is such a cool idea, and I've, ne I've still never seen anything really like it yet. Hi, Osprey. I'm sorry I missed you. I'll be talking about you again. I'm not. I'm clearly not keeping up with this small chat window, am I? But yeah, uh, Small City is coming back. They'll have no. They'll have more things available. But I remember we we only had a few games with uh, with Rich and I, and Rich isn't really a fan of Town Center either. It's it it is strange to kind of be visualizing in three D as Clinic is as well. Clinic takes that three D building aspect, and rather than things growing by themselves, you've got to connect them all to treat all of the people. Uh, so these are these are still kind of honorable mentions of these Kickstarters. I said it was going to be quick. I'm not, am I? Let's face it. Uh, series. This is. A, an honourable mention one, because I don't really know much about this. It's Artipia, it's got a cool space theme, it's worker placement, they've they've got a an engineer, an astrophysicist on board for the best possible thematic ties. Not really, don't really know much about it than that. You're mining, you're trading resources and things. I like Artipia, I like space. Hey, maybe this is a good uh, tie-in time to do a new version or a reprint of Among the Stars, because Among the Stars is amazing. But hey, yeah, I'm, I've got my eye on series. Series? Series? Hey, series. Uh, but yes, La Granja, which Paul has just done a video for as well, is on Kickstarter for a deluxe master set. Board and Dice have done this before with um, Yido, which I haven't got, but Snowdonia. They did an amazing job of the master set of Snowdonia. La Granja was, was a great meaty Euro game from, I want to say 2016 as well. 2016 just kind of comes to mind for every year that any game ever came out. Uh, but yeah, it, it was a really cool game with multi-use cards. You had these player boards that had little cutouts in them. And depending on where you placed the card, uh, it would reveal a, a different section of the card and give you extra barrows or extra resources or extra places to put people. And you had this central market to compete for, which, uh, as I remember, we found a little bit mean. It was similar to the one that's in Luna as well. And uh, we thought that about Luna. I really loved it, apart from this little bit. But hey, uh, it's it's coming back. It's on Kickstarter right now. It's been deluxified, great big box. There's a huge version. There's loads of extra modules. One of them is designed by Stefan Feld. Yeah, tons and tons and tons of stuff. If you're into your Lagrana, that that's on right now. So I think these were the 10 that I was going to talk about <laughs> before I started opening new tabs. Uh, and uh, yeah, let's go. I might be doing videos for some of these things. We'll see. I, I will be doing a video for Autobahn. Spoilers, Autobahn. So Fabio Lopiano did the fantastic Merv as well as, I know he's done other things, but in terms of ones that I have played and uh, done videos for on these things, Fabio Lopiano designed Merv. Nestor Manjone designed uh, Masters of Renaissance, co-designed, and co-designed Newton as well. And the upcoming um, Darwin's Journey. They'll be on another bit of this list. Uh, but yes, they are designing a game together. I really like... I don't know why in particular, but I really like the idea of building the Autobahn. <laughs> I don't know why that appeals so much, but it is. It's it's kind of a, a pick-up-and-deliver game where we're building the routes in that we're building the Autobahn and petrol stations and stuff and delivering uh, resources to the places that we are connecting up. So that um, the, the art... Javier Ink Golem, uh, has, uh, he, he's done the art for many things at this point. He did Tinner's Trail, uh, also recently by Alley Cat Games. It's a beautiful cover. You know, everything else is uh, just prototype stuff, I think. The image is so far for it. But uh, yeah, it's yeah, I'm a secret craft work fan, exactly. That, that's another reason that I'm uh, really into the Autobahn. But yeah, uh, uh, 
a, a crunchy meaty euro game you're like we're, we've only got i'm assuming you know it's the it's the publisher submitted weight and even then like you can only get a vague idea of uh how meaty a game would be from this but hey a 3.6 out of 5 that's kind of meaty right i don't really like I, I can't speak to the master set but i, I wouldn't say legranho was was that fiddly on the t when she had it to the table the, or the original version anyway the the boards worked so well Yeah, I'm, I'm sure there's a, there's at least another Fabio game that I'm talking about later. I think there's two actually. You just mentioned one, uh, but yeah, Alley Cat uh, do great things, and hey, I do great videos about those great things. There'll be one coming up soon when that's on uh, Kickstarter. In alphabetical order, I think these games, by the way, Deep Rock Galactic, the board game, and said like if if you're not a fan of the video game that I'm mentioning in a couple of these things, you might not care about these games at all so deep rock galactic is a cooperative video game your dwarf miners there's different classes one has got like a, a zip line that they zip to platforms and stuff on that's the one i always was one can drill um one can point things out and kind of launch themselves to things like that's me uh, but yes uh ole steiness is designing something else on this list, but I, I meant to mention as well, that is the designer of, you know, Champions of Midgard was uh, a very big game, but Police Precinct as well. Like, if if I had infinite room, Police Precinct uh, would still be in my collection. It's, uh, it's a great little co-op game, really nicely thematic. But this is one where, like, it's it's got a huge video game following. The, there's not too much about what the gameplay is going to be like, because the, the gameplay, you know, we are going down uh, great big alien mines. We're, we're dwarf miners in space, basically. There are aliens there. It's a, it's a shooting and mining game, uh, the video game is. So rather than it being this 3D thing, we've got this uh, hex map. You can see it's got all minis of the aliens to fight and all of that. Dice. Hey, but co-op is the big thing as well. Basically, absolutely love the video game, especially in the in 2020, we've put hours and hours and hours into the uh, video game together. If it gets turned into cardboard well, that'll be fantastic. Oh yeah, thanks, Jim. I always forget, hey, uh, like, the, like the video and follow me and stuff if you like. And hey, it all gets made possible by Patreon. That's not the side that it's on. Patreon.com forward slash slicker drips. Oh, my arm's cut off on that side as well. I can't point to it. I've made I've made a situation where I can't point to the thing. Patreon.com forward slash slicker drips. If you'd like to enable me to make videos about all of these things, well, the, the Kickstarters, it will depend on the companies wanting me to do videos. But hey, later on, it's uh, those games are obtained thanks to your support. <laughs> exactly. Hi ho, hi ho. That's what we sang every time at the start of every level. Uh, but yeah, I recommend the video game, uh, definitely. Fit to Print is designed by Peter McPherson, who you may know as the designer of Tiny Towns. It's published by, and I imagine it's got something to do with the team as well, of Flat Out Games, who have you know just had hit after hit of these, um, these crunchy, thinky, puzzly games that are surprisingly accessible in terms of Calico, that's that's the harder one uh, but uh, also cascadia and verdant was on kickstarter a couple of months ago but uh yeah so designed by tiny towns designer published by flat out games art by ian o'toole theme is woodland newspaper <laughs> getting building the front page of a woodland newspaper uh we are talking about who took home first prize for their baked goods at the community fair who's been digging in missile mrs bramblebury's carrot patch so a very beatrix potter kind of theme i'm into that this sounds great like all of those things coming together like i know it says 2023 on it it's going to be on kickstarter this year as far as i know that all sounds great to me it all just sounds like tick 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 next up so that's that's fit to print by the way remember you've said all of these things so this is what's coming from board cubator who are the publishers uh, as we were talking about project l earlier on i don't know if there's going to be a video of this from me i hope so uh, so this is based on a video game as well that i've not played i have since bought to try and uh, do some research on so it's a kind of uh, medieval oh i can just read categories now i know it's like a it's a it's a fantasy you know sword and sword fighting video game basically isn't it loads of role playing exploration talking to people uh, the this turns it into a cooperative um exploration board game you know campaigns stories scenarios app uh, integrated that is all grand by me 
And yeah, based on things like Space Race and Project L, admittedly very, very different games. But uh, yeah, I I trust Board Cubator to bring us something great. And uh, yeah, Project L is, is kind of... You, you wouldn't expect that that would be the, the previous project. But yeah, they, they did an amazing job on that. Yeah, please consider supporting me on Patreon. It will be amazing. It won't pop right up now. I apologize if I don't say anything. If you do join up right now but i'll i'll say something right after as soon as i look at my phone we'll get us to two i think i think we're at like 165 right now hey 200 would be amazing you get benefits and stuff we're gonna have a, a top 10 vote at some point soon uh not all of the top 10s will be this wordy but yeah kingdom come deliverance is coming to kickstarter next up it was mentioned earlier legacy of you so i think that there may well be a video coming up for this later in the year when this is on kickstarter so it's it's another you know, solo based game from Garfield. You know they knocked out of the park with uh, Hadrian's Wall last year. You know this has only got similarities in that it's from Garfield. The art is from Sam Phillips, and it's a uh, well Hadrian's Wall wasn't a solo based game. That's just me thinking of it in that way because of the the campaign. But uh, yeah, this is designed by Shem Phillips, you know, co designer of pr practically I think everything except Hadrian's Wall, right? That Garfield uh, have created. You know. The, the West Kingdom trilogy designed um, with Sam MacDonald. And I, I can't uh, think who the uh, North Seas one was co-designed with. But that's because I need to catch up on the North Seas. I've, I've missed out on the North Seas trilogy. But this is a campaign game, a resettable campaign game. So, so not Legacy. Uh, it's got a cool theme. Basically, I, I've just put it on this because I, I'm basically up for anything Garfield are putting out after the obsessive playing and streaming of uh, the West Kingdom trilogy last year and Hadrian's Wall, which is coming up later this week, to continue it along. Yeah, totally up for it. Based on all of the previous games, I, I don't really need to... As, as soon as I just saw, hey, we're coming up with a new game, it was going to be on the list. But yeah, it, it sounds pretty cool. And I am interested in going along. Like, the, the fact that... Like, Hadrian's Wall is a multiplayer game as well, but it's been supported really surprisingly well with a, a campaign that's really encouraged you to explore all aspects of a chunky roll and write game. Yeah, I'm, I'm really interested to see what they do with uh, with a, a scenario-based, uh, story-based kind of game. So Legacy of You, coming to Kickstarter at some point this year. Oh, Hadrian's Wall says best with one at BGG. Like we've only we we played a few games two player when it came out, and we played a four player game, and yeah, the, everyone really enjoyed it. But you are really th there's bits of interaction of using other people's cards and they get a resource. There's there's a bit of it in there, but yeah, there's there's a lot of just looking at your own sheet and stuff, which is is not a problem for me. But yeah, I, I've uh, certainly played it most at uh, one player. Oh, James Fit to Print needs a multi promo card. That'd be amazing. I don't think it's a reprint of... Uh, is it a reprint of Penny Press? I think it was a new thing. But hey. I need to look into these things more. But yeah, Hadrian's War Solo is great. Grab the solo campaign. Not to harp on about 2021 games, but oh, it's a special one. Uh, next up, Rolling Heights. This is from John D. Clare, master of the see-through cards of the card crafting system uh that said like edge of darkness and um, that dead reckoning mystic veil the the main and first one but this is a game where we're rolling meeples apparently it's it's a city building game where and a tile laying game where we are going to be building various things and you roll meeples to see what you are able to do on your turn not dice meeples is that enough to what just just a designer the the art of quantum Moria again and the fact that you're rolling meeples enough to get me excited about a game yes apparently so definitely <laughs> that's uh, what i want it's it's, it's got um push your luck it's got bag building and the various meeples that you have got and what they will do it sounds pretty cool like that's it's a good tagline for me roll your meeples to build a better city it sounds pretty cool uh, and i imagine it'll be on kickstarter at some point soon Next up, back to the world of video games, but a video game that's a bit more um, board game adjacent. Slay the Spire. Uh, I would encourage you, you know, if, if you're, you're into your video gaming, it's on pretty much all platforms at this point. Uh, any console, your phones, your tablets. Slay the Spire is a deck building game. Just talking about the video game, it's incredible. Uh, you can get lost 
for countless hours in uh, the various runs. It's a roguelike, so you've got like a randomly generated dungeon of these various rooms you'll go to, different kind of enemies. You've got loads of different classes with individual decks of cards and stuff that uh, you'll get presented a random... Uh, every time you win a battle, you'll be given a choice of cards to gain to help uh, build your deck you'll go to shops get artifacts that uh, tweak your playstyle and stuff it, it's so fantastic uh, can't be superlative enough about the video game so there's not really much information about the board game either so this is another one that is just kind of i love the bo- the video game so much i hope this is great i did see actually I can't remember where it was. Someone just reporting that they have played it and that it does all of this stuff and it respects the video game so much. And uh, yeah, let's keep looking forward to it. But as you say, there's not really that much information about it yet. Uh, I'll be coming to Kickstarter at some point this uh, year. And it's it's so, so good. Like, I've played Rogue Book on, on stream, which is a similar kind of uh, video game deck, roguelike deck builder. Monster Train is a cool one as well. Like, the, there's more popping up. But Slay the Spire still kind of sits on top of them. Uh, and yeah, I can't I can't wait to see how it kind of, as, as the king of this uh, digital deck builder world, how does it translate into actual cardboard? Because like the, the video game aspect of it is doing all sorts of kind of calculations and what to present you with and all sorts of stuff for you. So it'll be cool to see how that translates into a, a fully cardboard experience. Next up alphabetically tindaya so this is a kind of like not a similar gameplay wise but theme wise it's kind of spirit islandy you know we are you know the the native people of this island there are settlers coming over here we want to you know protect the island and preserve the island there are gods that uh, will be displeased if you try and you know you've got to feed your people and prosper uh, in your particular a set of people but you can't you don't want to take too much from the land and that will annoy the gods and their wrath will be felt uh, the board will change over time you have this uh this big hex map that will be altered based on what the gods do there will be like tsunamis and stuff like that and uh yeah you can play it as a as a competitive game you can play it a, with a traitor involved fair enough but the the main attraction you can play a co-op and you can play it solo and uh, that's what i would be looking out for that's on kickstarter quite soon i think oh paul is doing a video for it very 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 soon it sounds cool so yeah just spirit island not only is it a fantastic game but the theme set it apart as well so uh, i'm glad that something else is coming along in a similar vein it's not doing uh, exactly the same kind of theme but yeah, the gameplay itself uh, sounds very meaty, sounds very different. Really looking forward to it. Tindaya, next up. <laughs> Not Zendaya, although Tyan, that, that can be the sequel. Unconscious Mind is coming from, uh, they're, I think they're going to be delivering Endless Winter this year, right? It's Fantasia Games. Uh, this is their next game. And just, it's another one that's kind of hooking for the theme, really. The art is lovely. It's Andrew Bosley, it's, Vin- it's Vincent Dutrait. But this is a game where we, I don't know if we play as Freud or we just play as other psychiatrists, but we are basically, it's a worker placement game where we are delving into our patients' unconscious minds and trying to solve their problems. It's a competitive game. Uh, There's worker placements. We are playing, as you can see here, we're playing therapeutic technique cards (laughs) and we send figures to action spaces in Vienna to... uh, activate different things in our notebooks the notes we've taken about our patients and stuff yeah it, it sounds it's, it's another one with a, a completely unique theme that uh hey freud had some strange ideas but hopefully we can help out these patients uh but yeah that, that sounds really cool to me uh, i don't think i'm familiar with um Lasquez and yoma and antonio zax but johnny pack has been involved with uh, a lot of great games lions of lydia was uh, a great one from last year But hey, Unconscious Mind, it sounds interesting. (laughs) We'll we'll go down to Paul's and play Tendaya. Oh, it's on Dice Tower's Breakfast Show. Yeah, it it sounds really, really cool. So I I believe that to be coming to Kickstarter this year. You're writing, oh, you were going to be writing the uh, rule book for it. Well, I hope, I hope they get someone. 
sorting it out. I, I think uh, Lions of Lydia was like, just just the base game was very, very gateway, very, um, I don't want to say basic as like a bad thing, but yeah, it, it's very stripped down and very easy to explain to people. But with the expansions, like it, it came with about eight or nine expansions in the box and it said, you know, like it, it said, you you can put four of these on at a time, which I found out afterwards. It's just a guide. You can put as many as you like on. I think with at least four of those expansions next turn on, I don't want to make out like it turns into a, a medium or a heavy game. But uh, yeah, as a as a lighter game with uh, plenty to think about, I really enjoyed Lions of Lydia with uh, with some expansions turned on. Hi, Jeff. I've forgotten. <laughs> Close the windows as I've been playing them. Oh, there's been so many. We're just talking about Kickstarters at the moment. The, the main... Um, the main chunk will be coming in a men. But don't worry, you've, you've just missed the the upcoming Kickstarters one. And not all of them. Next up, Wayfarers of the South Tigris and just the, the South Tigris trilogy in general. Kind of a repeat of earlier. Like, all I know is there's a new trilogy coming from Garfield. As I said, I haven't delved into the, the North Sea trilogy, but I feel like in the last year at least, I've got pretty kind of obsessive about the uh, West Kingdom trilogy. And yeah, I, I can't wait to see another one. It's, again, co-designed Shem Phillips and Sam McDonald who did the West Kingdom trilogy together. I've just noticed there's a, there's a tiny... There's a tiny space my <laughs> over here for some reason. I don't, I don't know how that's gotten so small. And so uh, let's just leave it there at this point. I'll turn that off. <laughs> that's what you get for messing about with all the templates at some point. But yes. Wayfarers of the South Tigris will be coming to uh, Kickstarter this year, I think. And yes, yeah, surely this uh, this means that there will be like an East trilogy at some point in the future, right? You can only hope. And like, it means that yeah, w whatever the the South trilogy brings, like I think the North Sea and the West Kingdoms have both had expansions, right? That tie all the games together. I know that Tome Saga for the West Kingdom uh, made them all co-op as well. Oh, I'm uh, just totally up for all of this stuff. It's going to be great. I hope. It's another one where I have to be like, you know, asterisk. I, I may well be doing uh, a video for South Tigris. But hey, uh, I made this list before that. So we'll, we'll see what happens. You can never be too sure, can you? So that is all Kickstarter stuff. Oh, South Tigris all involved dice in some way. Oh, cool. Oh, dice placement like circadians. That would be interesting. Oh, yeah, there's, there's also, um, I should have in the honorable mention list, but I haven't got um, the, the second circadians game, which would be delivering this year, right? That would be amazing. Yeah, I'm just up for it. Look at it. <laughs> Looks cool. Right. That is Kickstarter's done. I need to close this browser now. And let's talk about... Uh, let's talk about triangles for a while. Marty's kind of on here, right? Uh, North Sea has a small box of runestones to connect the games, but shipwrights isn't soloable. All right. Well, I'd like, to, I'd like to try it at some point. All right. What needs to go up next? As I said, I, I will get to a top 10. There, there is a definitive list of just 10 games that I whittled it down to. In the meantime, I want to whittle through some other things. And I started kind of, I haven't put these in any order. Started with one that like, oh, from the forums and stuff, contentious. <laughs> we'll get into any of that. I know it, it delayed and all of this stuff, but hey, may maybe it'll come out. Madeira Collector's Edition. Madeira is a meaty Euro game from the, the publisher that is uh, one of the masters of uh, meaty Euro games. And Madeira, I have to admit that like we had it, I'd say in 2015, something like that. Played it, kind of enjoyed it, but like just just difficult for us. Maybe a bit too heavy for us at the time. All these years on, I wonder how I'd feel about it now. And it's it's got all sorts of extra things on it as well. And there's there's I think that there have been various things getting in the way of this. But I think once hopefully crossing fingers. This comes out this year, everything goes well, everyone's happy, and um, they carry on with Zhang Guo because I still have Zhang Guo. Zhang Guo is uh, my favourite, by far, of the What's Your Game games. Oh, I'd love to do a video about Zhang Guo. It's brilliant. I didn't really like how Circadians looked. I, I like... It is like a, 
a different kind of art style, yeah, for sure. But it, it did change, right, with the new edition of uh, Circadians. It got updated a little bit. <laughs> Vegetably like a point salad, yeah. Hey, what's up? Thanks for joining us. Yeah, Marty is... Oh, he's he's gone off camera again, hasn't he? But he's he's just about here. Can make him be up more on camera a little bit. He's just about present for us. Which is like... I think he's just hoping that there will be treats at some point. But yeah, I, I know like they've, they've had big delays and things with this. And like... Um, the last couple of years haven't helped anyone, really, have they? Get things made and get things shipped. But yeah, it's just a, a, a crossed fingers. Maybe uh, maybe I'll get to give uh, Madeira another go. Paperback Adventures. I've backed this. I'm excited. So this take, this paperback is a deck-building word game from Fowers Games. It's had an expansion. It's had a different standalone game with um, hardback. This is another standalone game that uses some similar gameplay, but takes inspiration from games like Slay the Spire, these roguelike deck builder uh, video games. And so it's a roguelike deck building physical word game. So, yeah, I'm totally up for that. It's got like just from the I, I think it's it's a way off still. I think it's May or something this is projected for. But uh, yeah, the the production and stuff that they're putting into this sounds really cool. Like loads of different classes with different decks, different enemies to fight and things. We're fighting enemies in a word game and stuff. It, it sounds so cool. No, I can't wait for that. And I, I've only played, like, I've only played Paperback as well. Like, I don't know that we've, like, Rach isn't a fan of word games at all. And like, that's, that's not a problem because we've got plenty of other games. Like, it was a little bit heartbreaking, like, we haven't got Paperback anymore. But the, there's a lot coming around and... Paperback Adventures hopefully will work well for us. But um, yeah, Marty's the cat. He's, he'll sometimes reveal himself. I think he's just about on camera now. Dunhuang and the Fog. I haven't looked at either of those. But yeah, I'd, I'd like to try hardback one day. It's, it's one that I've always kind of thought, I, re I really want to get hold of that, but thinking like, well... What what makes me think that, that Rach would like this any more than uh, she did paperback? Rach is uh, my partner who I play pretty much everything with, by the way. Just wondering who, who these people are. Who's this Marty and this Rach that he just keeps uh, talking about all the time? So here we go. The other game, so Ole is designing the Deep Rock Galactic uh, board game that I mentioned earlier. This is a game that did well on uh, Kickstarter last year for uh, AEG. This is a, it's a bag building game, right? Where we are drawing meeples out, protecting a town. There's, I don't know if there's some kind of tower defense in it. It looks pretty nice. Well, it's AEG, isn't it? It's, uh, they've usually got some great production involved. I like the theme of it. I like the look of it. I like bag building games. I'm up for some meeples and monsters. That, that, that's the kind of speed. I'll do that with every game. That's, that's the kind of speed I want to be with these. Cryptid is an incredible deduction game. It might be the best deduction game. Uh, and it's like, it's, it's got special two player rules. It works for two players really well. Cryptid Urban Legends, same designers, same kind of idea, I think, but this is a two player only version of Cryptid uh, Urban Legends. I can't wait for this. I don't know much beyond that. I don't know if anything's been revealed beyond that, but I don't need to know anything beyond that. It still looks beautiful. It's still going to have the the same ideas, I think. So you you like there are there are sets of rules, right? Encrypted. You can do it with an app or you can do it with books that come with the game where one spot on this randomly generated map will have this will be the space where the cryptid is hidden. We're searching for this cryptid creature. And every turn you will have to ask questions of people and they will have to reveal some information if uh, you're if you're wrong about where your guess is you've got to reveal a bit of information because we've all got clues that if we knew everybody's clue they would all point to this one space on the board but it's all about you know trying to misdirect people when you have to reveal a bit of information sometimes you're just forced to somebody asks about a certain space and you've just got to say is that the right one or not but yeah Cryptid is absolutely fantastic. There is a two-player only version coming out. It's going to be grand, hopefully. Vagrant Song. I think someone mentioned Vagrant Song, actually. And uh, I missed it in the chat. Uh, I talked about this in my Essen video, I think, that it's still... I, I, it's still not made its way to England, I don't think. Uh, I think I've got a pre-order. I think it 
<laughs> her birthday present is a uh, favorite song from uh, october but this is a cooperative boss battling game so rather than just uh, general dungeon crawling we're going to have to team up against, uh, basically, on a ghost train. We've got to work together to survive. I don't know much beyond that because, basically, I don't want to keep looking and seeing something that I can't have <laughs> yet. But, uh, yeah, it, it seems like a really cool production. Really nice art style. Different kind of idea. Oh, Solo Board Gaming Nights. Yes, it was you. Thank you for reminding me. Oh, it hasn't got to the US yet either. Okay, then, so I shouldn't be moaning there. If it's only just delivering in the US, it's going to be... Usually, it's it's probably a couple of months before it makes it over here, but I'm really looking forward to it. Vengeance Roll and Fight. I'll be quicker as well about ones that I did videos for last year. Uh, a meaty uh, roll and write game. A, a kind of real-time roll and write game as well. It had this real, real-time real element where if you could assign your dice really quickly, you could have more and more dice out of this pool. Uh, designed by you know, original Vengeance designer Gordon Kaleha uh, and David Tortsey, designer of everything else. <laughs> and uh, Gnarly Lovers, uh, their first design uh, together, I think. Uh, but yeah, you, you can see my playthrough for episode one. I think the first two episodes were in a Kickstarter together. Uh, yeah, that's uh, going to be delivering at some point soon. It's great. Vengeance was great. Vengeance Roll and Fire, I think, uh, yeah, I, I think tops it. Takes that kind of uh, Kill Bill, that roaring rampage of revenge movie uh, theme and applies a lot, of, a lot of similarities, but just really fast, really snappy. Uh, such a great uh, thing. So I'm, I'm not going too quick as well, and the, the, I'm mucking up the conversations. But yeah, I think paper, Paperback Adventures, yeah, I, th I think a, a lot more has been, fr from what I could see recently, a lot more development was needed than they planned to. Like, they, they didn't realise how much more time was needed. Uh, to to perfect all these different classes and a roguelike uh, deck builder and stuff. I suppose, like, I'm not saying the video games don't take development time. I imagine an enormous amount of time goes into thinking up anything for something like Slay the Spire. But uh, at least you've got kind of... You've got patching and you've got the, the video game element of it handling calculations and statuses and all of that sort of stuff. So making that kind of game in actual physical form, I imagine, is a lot more difficult. But yeah, I'm looking forward to it still. There's like, there's just, I wouldn't say there's that many things that I managed to back, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm kind of in a privileged position, right? That there are games that I need to make videos for that are kind of, uh, that are always looming over me that I kind of forget about when things are going to arrive. But it is going to be uh, behind schedule, yeah. I think May, the last uh, thing that they said. Would you like Vengeance? I think... I don't like as a multiplayer game. We had it had something to do with the setup and stuff as well. But we played a four four player game of it. There was a lot of downtime. I'll say that we had only played it before. As Vengeance is a fantastic solo game, and we'd played it. And it, I remember it working well. We've had it for a few years now uh, as a two player game as well. Four players, I would say it was quite slow. And yeah, the the at least one of the people that we were playing with was getting fed up and a bit bored of like the nothing to do between their turns your turn is basically you going through the 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 boss's lair you know of some of the people that you need to take revenge on and doing all of this dice manipulation and stuff i'd say roll and fight would be the one that i would recommend first at this point just because it's it still has that that theme and you are doing similar things you have you know skills to level up you have items and all of that but uh, I suppose roll and fight depends on if you're into your real time. People might not like the real time element of it. Artisans of Splendor Vale is one that I would have loved to have backed. It was it was a pricey one, but another one that's kind of it's an enormous box full of stuff, uh, full of uh, bespoke components. It looked absolutely beautiful. Designed by Nikki Valens, who has been involved in tons of fantasy flight things like Legendy. Le Legendsy, Legends of uh, Dragonhold, um, the Arkham Horror Third Edition, uh, Mansions of Madness Second Edition. I know I'm forgetting like a million things. They've designed a a, a million things that uh, are all incredibly well regarded. And uh, so, Artisans of Splendid Vale was. I'll talk about this in another game as well. That there is kind of that there are events to handle. There are. Uh, there's there's like a grid based i don't think it's combat where did it say like there's, there's challenges there's tactical action scenes is how it's put out but 
the idea that we are these um these different characters that are on a quest together the story involved in that there's independent quests as well we had i think these kind of everyone had like a paperback book the various characters in it and so sometimes you would have adventures just off on your own um but yeah it, it's just a, a a big cooperative story-based legacy game that uh, looked beautiful i think it's going to deliver i think this might be one where you just missed out on it if if you didn't back the Kickstarter, which would be a shame. I would like to get to play it at some point. But yeah, it did look beautiful. Tenpenny Parks. If you've heard me go on about theme park-based games in the past, and hey, th there's more coming up in this list. Uh, this is from Thunderworks, uh, your makers of role player and its uh, various worlds, amongst other things. But this is designed by uh, Nate Linhart. Beautiful cover by Vincent Dutrait. I know that. We're building a theme park. It's it's got a kind of a a bit of a barren park look to it. You know, tetromino pieces, um, a, a small uh, beginning park that you can buy extensions to later on. Are they still taking pre-orders for Austin's? Oh, that would be cool. I, have, I still can't get in on that, but maybe I will be able to at some point because it sounds really cool and different. And I like this idea that as much as I love those, you know, big fantasy. Uh, not necessarily sword and sorcery, but you know, off fighting all of the baddies and all of that, as much as I like that stuff, I like the idea of things moving away from that. In in video games too, like, I know it's kind of a complete tangent, but like, say a video game like Death Stranding, where the objective is kind of, you're a courier. It's There's more to it than that. <laughs> there's, a, there's a weird story attached to it, but I like the idea that... Um, the, the, the gameplay doesn't necessarily need to be tied to going on a kind of fighting story and that it ends up that, you know, that there has to be this big bad guy to be defeated. As much as I you know, will rave about games that do have that, I think uh, I think there's room for some meandering. Like, the um, um, this needs to be in the... Oh, I should be in the top 10, actually, if it's delivering this year. That means there's going to be 11 in the top 10. Uh, but Lands of Galzia that I did a video for last year takes that kind of you know we're not on we're not on great big life or death adventures but we're on kind of uh, it was like Tom Sawyer kind of adventures uh, these um, these just kind of uh, I haven't got the the words for it <laughs> but uh, yeah r rather than you're all saving the world. People have got problems in the places that they live. People have got conflicts to be sorted out. People are tricking other people. Uh, this this game, this is Tenpenny Parks uh, by Thunderworks Games. So the other thing I wanted to talk about with the picture is this carousel here spins and the, the person whose turn it is defines the prices of all of those cards by spinning that carousel. Again, there's, there's not a lot of information about this, but uh, based off those few things, I want for some Tenpenny Parks. It sounds cool. I trust Thunderworks. That's uh, it's it's coming straight to retail. This is as well. Uh, it's not going to Kickstarter, as far as I know. Uh, another one that I did a video for some time ago in the past. Uh, Planet Unknown. It is a a polyomino game where we take polyominoes from. If we just dip into someone's pictures of the game in play, this is it called a Lazy Susan. I don't know if there's another game for another name for it than that. But um, yeah, you are you are taking tiles from uh, this central space based on uh, where you are sitting you're covering things and getting tanks you've got goals to reach for i really really enjoyed the the prototype and the little thing that i did on it but yeah keep keep an eye out for planet unknown it'll be i think it's it's another one that's hit uh covid related delays i think but it'll be on its way very soon death stranding is a bizarre game i absolutely love it but yeah strange it doesn't even begin to describe how strange it is Oh, thank, thanks for joining us, Bonnie Crew. Hope you have a good meeting and nice to meet you. It's 118 pounds, but you can you can. Oh, they've got a UK site as well. Oh, well, that is that is all a plus because especially the way things go around here, uh, it's it's going to be worrying getting things delivered here for in terms of you know like shipping charges, but VAT charges and all sorts of stuff. Uh, but yeah, hopefully that's coming this year. What are we talking about next? Zapotec. So here we go. Fabio Lapiano of uh, of Merv and you know, other things I don't want to just say that as if he's just designed one game, but I haven't played your know, Ragusa, Kali, Mala. I know they're well regarded as well, but yeah, I've, I've just played Merv. 
and it was great. But yeah, Zaptek. Are they starting a line of Zed games? It's board and dice. I trust them with um this this seems to be a little well, it's medium, isn't it? 2.6, maybe a, a, a little on the lighter side. I'm up for them with Euro games though. I'm gonna be playing Tabanusi at some point soon. Uh, I've got that behind me. Uh I know Origins First Builders is a lighter game as well, but yeah, that, that'll be coming up. Board and dice know what they're doing. Fabio Lapiano. Well, he knew what he was doing with Murf, and I trust that he knows what he's doing outside of that. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm looking forward to some Zap Attack, which I think is coming very soon, right? Or people have got it already. Like, you don't have to look very far for that. Next up, another one that I did a video for, uh, Beyond the Rift, Petition's Mouth card game. Love Petition's Mouth. Uh, it's a, it's a euro -y dungeon crawler. It's a dungeon crawler with rondelles and stuff. I did a video for that uh, way back when, but this kind of continues the story on and with a different design, it turns it into a card-based game. You can check my playthrough out for it, but it does it uh, incredibly well. And yeah, I'm looking forward to playing it more. I just had the, the prototype and like the first few adventures for it, but it uh, has a, a whole story and stuff going on. Yeah, B Board and Dice seem to have brought out a, a load of uh, games all in one go, haven't they? And there's like, there's founders of Teotihuacan and stuff. Like, I had to try and cut the list down a little bit. But <laughs> I know it doesn't seem like I did, but I genuinely did. I just want to mention everything. Drop Drive. I did a video about this that you can watch. Basically, uh, you might have heard of Dungeon Drop. It's Dungeon Drop in space. There are, there are different seasons as well. We had these lovely zigzaggy... Um, I don't know if you can really see it in people's pictures, uh, but here we go. At the, at the bottom here, these, these zigzaggy uh, rulers that... Um, snap together and they show you how high you need to drop your ship from when it's doing a a, a warp speed action uh, you can drop it somewhere else on the board but you know the depending on your ship's stats you might have to drop it from higher up and so it's uh, got less accuracy than that but you also lay it down and that's how far you can move you kind of zigzag it over these various cubes and that's how you pick them up and visit the planets and stuff oh it's so so good i mean dungeon drop is great in its own right but the stuff they added for this the pirate ships the visiting the planets um trying to i've seen a few videos for for drop drive i think it's deli it was a kickstarter definitely but maybe it's maybe it's delivering um quickly and I, I realized from looking back on lists and stuff that the concept of time for me ends up a bit blurry. So, <laughs> um, yeah, th things that I think I filmed yesterday, I was like, oh, I did a video for drop driving, like, is it August or something like that? Which seems strange. I, I, I swear it was about three weeks ago. But yeah, it, it may well be uh, delivering. But drop drive, check it out. And I did a playthrough for the, the prototype anyway. Darwin's Journey. So again, we are... On uh, Nestor Manjon, who and, and Simone Ligioni, two together co-designed Newton and the Masters of Renaissance uh, Lorenzo card game. Uh, this is one that I have uh, I've late pledged for. I'm looking forward to it, kind of just based on Newton. It's another um, Euro game on the heavy side. I like the Charles Darwin theme of it. I like the look of it, but I have to admit that it's it's one that I've just got really excited about. Um, other designers like Simone Luciani as well has designed a million things. You know, been involved in um, everything from like Zolkin to Grand Austria Hotel, Marco Polo, tons and tons of stuff. But uh, yeah, looking forward to that. Oh, am I taking you to a different page right now? No, I've just I've just uh, tabbed out onto <laughs> the the other screen. Let me get back. Where have I gone? Someone looks Johnny. There we go. I clicked the wrong thing. Uh, so yeah, Darwin's Journey. It's coming, I think. I can't remember a date. I've, I've looked at so many things this morning and have not looked at uh, when Darwin's Journey is coming. Just basically navigating like, oh, I should, I should probably mention the um, the Madeira stuff. and <laughs> don't, don't, don't leave that unsaid, but also, I don't want to get into it too much. Familiar Tales... Is another game from Jerry Hawthorne who did, you know, Mice and Mystics, but as well, I'm forgetting the we didn't play Mice and Mystics. We played the ones in the series after that. Well, I forget Stuffed Fables. There we go. Uh, who you know, these are? Oh, I'm, I'm showing you. That's that's the wrong window again. You're not seeing that. There we go. I'm not completely ruining the whole thing, uh, but yes, Familiar Tales is another one of these. Uh, you know, kind of kind of for everyone. They're not you know big, meaty, complex games, but they are beautiful, charming uh, story-based games where we are 
in familiar in um stuff fables we were you know a, a kind of toy story thing i think i did a video for stuff fables right way back when um but yeah this is so so normally they're there's a big storybook map. Um, we play out our adventure on here, and there's dice rolling and stuff involved. Here, it's introducing... You know, I may have missed out on a game, and this has already happened. This is introducing app integration. It's introducing uh, deck building to it. And I wonder, like... I imagine it's different, and I'm just conflating things in my head, but if it's got some kind of Forgotten Waters vibe to it with the, the stories in the, the, the web app and stuff. It would be really cool if it did. Yes, and uh, Solo board, board Gaming Night says, this is delivering very, 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 very soon. Tried to say it in a weird way and then couldn't get the actual word out when it came to it. <laughs> oh, um, Darwin's Journey was supposed to deliver in Feb, but probably June. Okay, so it's not too far away then. Yeah, Familiar Tales. It sounds great. Morton Medieval Detective. I don't know any more about this than I knew when I put it on the S and list, basically. When things have got kind of deduction and detective game in there, I'm into it. <laughs> I'm into the idea of what a medieval detective is. Uh, as far as I know, it hasn't made its way over here yet, though, so I'm just going to have to wonder for now. I need to make some kind of Columbo board game, right? Return to Dark Tower. I don't, I don't know if it's just before my time, or maybe it wasn't a thing. Maybe it was more a thing just in America, the the you know the eighties electronic Dark Tower uh, game. This is, you know, Restoration Games bring back and revitalize. They restore these uh, classic board games. And, uh, yeah, Isaac Childress, father of <laughs> Gloomhaven, uh, amongst many others, of course, uh, has been brought in to make a make a sequel, make a reimagining of this, dice this Dark Tower game. I don't think it's... I think it is kind of an electronic... It, it, there's this great big electronic tower that's kind of acts as a dice tower and stuff. I know that you know it, it's it's kind of a. I think I've just seen people talking about the the competitive game of it. That it's it, it's a bit of a daft laugh, but there's a, there's a cooperative game built into it as well. Like I have no kind of concept of what is actually involved beyond pictures and little clips of what that original um, Dark Tower game is. I think people that backed it on Kickstarter are getting it right. It's being delivered now. I've seen people uh, playing it. But yeah, it's it's definitely not out that I have it. So I'm anticipating it. Was it is um, is Dark Tower already out? Where you are, Joseph? It, 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 it may well be. Uh, Madeira again. <laughs> Talk about that again. Dead Reckoning uh, is another card crafting game from John D. Clare, pirate themed. I as your Ian O'Toole doing lovely art for it. I'm into the card crafting. I'm not really into the you know the the fighting each other, the messing with each other that Dead Reckoning seemed to have. Which you know, it's a pirate themed game. It makes sense. Uh, but I remember Rumblings, and it does say here one to four players. I remember Rumblings at the time that it was getting a a, a solo mode put into it. That's what I would be going for because I don't feel like you know it's it, it's aiming for a four X kind of piracy game. So conflict absolutely suits it. Don't get me wrong. But yeah, I, I would be into the solo, if anything, with that. UK copies not due until March, at least. Well, that's, that's not too far. Uh, Eternal Palace. We're, we're Bob Ross in it. <laughs> There's some worker placements. There's a really cool um, element of building up these paintings out of all of these little cardboard bits. I did a playthrough for this. I did an overview for it, actually. I tell a lie. Uh, but yeah, my, my overview will give you a hopefully succinct way of here. Hey, I'm not on these three videos. There I am. There I am, just uh, popping up there. Yeah, check out check out my overview from it. It's really cool. Uh, and as well, you can check out my playthroughs for Siege of Valeria, Tower Defense, solo only uh, entry into the Valeria universe. It's so great. And Dice Kingdoms of Valeria. Hey, it's Card Kingdoms of Valeria turned into a roll and write game. Also works fantastically well. Uh, they were on Kickstarter quite soon. Quite recently, I should say, rather than quite soon. Uh, UK copies of Dark Tower in March, at least. Uh, will EOS Island of Angels? I'm not sure. What does EOS stand for? I don't think so. Maybe, but, but let, let me know. What is it? Maybe it's uh, an abbreviation I'm not... That isn't clicking in my head and it will be coming up. And I'll be baffled. Uh, Dungeons, Dice and Danger. Roland Wright from 
you know, father of Magic the Gathering, Richard Garfield. He is father of Magic the Gathering, right? I don't know why I question everything that I say. Of course he is. Uh, yeah, uh, new uh, new small box game from Alia. Roland Wright. All you really have to say is Roland Wright, and I'm interested. But hey, got all of these things. Oh, it's it's not an abbreviation. I am just foolish. I don't think I've seen that, no. Oh, no, I haven't seen this. It's on it's on the list right now. So, uh, so drafting nautical exploration game. Oh, an exciting engine builder game for two to five players. Include some worker placements, asymmetric crew. Demons will attack the ships and crews. Yeah, if we're if we're not attacking each other, I'm down with that. Sounds pretty cool. I I have not seen that before, but yeah, I I would be up for that. You know, just from. A, a cursory look at the the summary page. <laughs> the top ten's coming, I promise. We got we got to mention these games. My City, fantastic legacy game from like was it 2020 or 2019 even that, that came out. Uh, starts out a really really simple polyomino game. It's Reiner Knizia, uh, and it's getting translated into a roll and write form with a shorter campaign. But hey, roll and writes are great. My City was great. This will be great. Uh, John Company, not my kind of game at all. Uh, I don't think, you know, in terms of the multiplayer, in terms of um, being aggressive with each other. Uh, but this is kind of on here because I know that uh, Ricky Royal, the father of solo games, <laughs> say everyone's the father of something, um, uh, is is doing the solo mode for it. And from what briefly I've seen on Twitter, it sounds really cool. I don't know if I should just try and get hold of it just for that uh maybe it still wouldn't be a game for me but it's it's on my radar just because of that recent addition to the honorable mentions and tempting to just shoehorn straight into the top 10 detective is a great series you know detective and modern crime board game from uh, portal games fantastic series i think we've played every iteration we're kind of in the middle of uh, vienna connection uh, but yeah it, it works fantastically well hey what if it was batman brilliant <laughs> so you know, what if we're in the world of Batman but rather than uh, doing the kind of minis games and that kind of stuff that's been done of Batman what if we focus on his investigations perfect I'm so into it I don't know that like I, I admit that it's like I, it's, there's probably a catchphrase on mission I just I, I see everybody lies and just think of house <laughs> more than Batman but hey uh, regardless I'm up for some uh, Batman detecting my small city yeah they can get confusing with small city and stuff. The spill. We're cleaning up oil spills. I like the theme. There's this kind of great big plastic uh, tower that's dropping the dice, and it's like kind of reverse tower defense or something like that. It sounds really cool. You know, it's me consciously trying to speed up a little bit now. There's only two more. Uh, and finally, just kind of dungeon crawly games that have uh, caught my eye, caught my right eye this week. Uh, Aeon Trespass Odyssey. Uh, sounds kind of like I don't want to take away from it. Uh, I imagine there's loads of differences that I haven't seen from a quick glance at the Board Game Geek summary, but a kind of um, Kingdom Death Monster kind of thing that we are, you know, these uh, very different characters that are trying to fight great big. Uh, it's a boss battler, basically. It sounds and looks very, very cool. Uh, it is a great big, you know, minis game with uh, a lot going on in it, but. It's one that's caught my eye. Trying to always keep Marty properly on camera. You always pack the spill, but then uh, your apartment thing happened. You can, you can have uh, loads more room now for it, aren't you? And also, Bodsunk is uh, from Steamforge Games. I think it's coming out fairly soon. I think. But hey, we're trying to inspire the Bard song. I would like to be playing just as a Bard and just uh, if everyone else is battling and you're there just uh, playing a song about it. Buffing people, of course. But I think, you know, there's the scenarios, there's, uh, there's a campaign to be played, it's a cooperative game or an exciting solo experience. Yeah, I'll, I'll find out more about it at some point. I, I think it's coming right really soon, right? Yeah, oh, oh you're saying it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is, if, if you backed it, it's about to be ready, I think. Uh, but uh, first you need the money for the apartment, then you can get it. Yes, de definitely do it in that order. You're right. So hopefully, I haven't rattled through those things too much. It's it's like 
It's like two top tens and an entire list of things. You have Battle of the Bards. I haven't seen that. I should get all bard-themed games. So, I'll change. So, what if I get rid of that? Let's talk about triangles for a while. And then... Oh, wrong order. There we go. The actual thing. Get the, get the timestamps ready. And I'll talk about the now 11 games. Because I thought of one at the last minute while we were making this. Uh that are on this top 10 and I'll just move. Well, there's one. I mentioned it earlier. <laughs> you can see it earlier. I tried to put it in proper order. Uh, so. Rach? Hello. Hello. I'm still going. Yes. We've just got 10 more things. What? How many are you doing? Many. <laughs> I've done a lot of things. Okay. Right. So let's talk about the actual top 10. So, Aeon's End Legacy 2. Aeon's End Legacy of Gravehold. It's got like twice as much stuff as in any other Aeon's End game. The first Aeon's End Legacy, it had some wonky bits. It had some bits that we didn't enjoy so much, but largely, it was uh, a really great experience. And I don't know, apart from maybe a couple of prototypes, I don't know that we've played a, a big Legacy game since. Aeon's End is fantastic. Probably the best kind of co-op deck builder around. Now I'm going to be offending the game I've really talked up, aren't I? But yeah, it's it's one of the best be deck builders, one of the best co-op games. Uh, and now it's getting, you know, it, it's just arrived, by the way. It's downstairs. We haven't looked at it. We're hoping to, like, catch up on the story of the, the chapters that we have, we've have we missed in the other boxes, and we hadn't had the expansions before. I got that stuff, and then I think we got distracted by, like, Descent and things like that. But it's here now. And at some point soon, like I wish I'd, uh, I'll be able to buy one, I think, at some point when it comes into shops. But uh, I wish I'd got a reset pack because it's got kind of, it's got two main branches, I think, right from the start that you can choose. But also, like we could have done a, 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 a playthrough of it and then I could do a, a, a playthrough here of, I don't know about the whole thing, but hey. Yeah, I, I'm in love with uh, Aeon's End and I'm happy. Long, long may it rain. Yeah, the, I imagine more stuff's coming because yeah we're talking in the, the discord about like they don't want to do a storage solution until they have sorted out you know they don't want to do a storage solution and then release more stuff uh so they, they want to do that at the end of it but not that i have any inside inf info on this but i presume they're gonna just keep bringing stuff out for it because it seems like you know I, as i said i haven't delved into all of the last two boxes but they seemingly have a, an unending supply of uh, ideas for Aeon's End. Jeff, would, uh, would Legacy of Gravehold be good if uh, you never had any experience with previous Aeon's End? I don't know. I know that the original Legacy did start you off you know, even simpler than normal Aeon's End because depending on which box you get, it can be difficult. Uh, you know, the, even the first game of Aeon's End in some of the... They're all standalone expansions, whichever one you get. But some of like the first games can be uh, pretty tricky. Whereas the, the original Legacy started you off right from scratch. You made these new characters and uh, they were even more basic than standard Breach Mages in the other boxes. I don't know if uh, Legacy of Gravehold starts you out in that way because it is continuing a story, right? So Legacy might be a good one to start with because although there is there, there's, there's thematic stuff and everything in the original Eon's End and War Eternal, the first legacy box is where this kind of ongoing story starts. So there is a story that goes all the way through the legacy game. And then the ones that have come out since New Age and Outcasts and their various expansions have continued the story that started there. So you could you could start with New Age or the Outcasts and it will catch you up on the story you've missed. But yeah, I think uh, Legacy 1 is a, a perfect starting point. But yes, Eon's End. Love it, love it, love it. It's uh, it's coming very, very soon. It's delivering to Kickstarter backers now. So I would imagine it's not too far away from retail. And I think like you, you can get the Kickstarter. There's no Kickstarter exclusive stuff. The, the, there's like a free expansion to Kickstarter backers that you can then buy later if you'd like it. Dice Theme Park. I raved about last year, about nine months ago. And I don't know if I forgot at the time. Hi, Rach. Hi. Thank you. So it is, 
you know, following on from kind of a, a bit of the look and a bit of the theme of uh, the Fantastic Dice Hospital from a few years ago, taking it into theme park territory, as I mentioned with uh, Tenpenny Park earlier, all you have to do is set your game in a theme park, and I'm into it. But this happens to be, you know, I, I'd love just just from the prototype that we had, I loved it even more than Dice Hospital. Uh, it, it so it's it, it looks great. It's Sabrina Miramont, and it's um designed by i don't know if i mentioned this in the original video or if i just forgot and then rediscovered it today that it's designed by adrian adamescu and daryl andrews who are the designers amongst many other things in together and separately designed sagrada together you know talking of you know dice drafting dice manipulation all that kind of stuff sagrada's right up there and i found out as well from clicking on daryl's page that there's a sagrada legacy coming apparently at some point in the future Oh, that would be amazing. Sagrada's brilliant. Uh, but yes, Dice Theme Park. Your dice are your guests in your park. And depending on, you know, the attractions need certain requirements of, you know, that you need uh, certain numbers or certain colours uh, of dice to ride uh, this ride. And depending on how many people ride it, you get um, stars, you get all sorts of uh, stuff involved. You you add extra um, attractions as you go through. You get staff members that will allow you to manipulate more dice. You get mascots that will allow you to mess with the dice. It just works so, 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 so well. And I say that, you know, big, big caveat. You know, that's, I think I just did an overview for it, right? Uh, but, you know, I, I, more things will be coming for Dice Theme Park when, uh, when it's ready. I can assure you of that. Uh, I only had a prototype. I got paid to make that overview. But, yeah, this... Uh, this has the potential, you know, if I, if I love it as much as I love that prototype, which I, I should, then oh, it's it's going to be one of the greats of the year, I think. As I said, just from just theme wise, uh, drags me into it. But the the dice manipulation and the you can, you can talk about me probably repeating the exact same words last year when I did the first impressions for dice theme park. But the the kind of pinballing of your guests. So when they're finished in one attraction, they kind of go to an adjacent one. And uh, when the dice tick down every time they ride something and when they're ones and they tick down, that's when your guests leave. So you want to try and do things to kind of give them energy again and pump them back up. All right. It works so well thematically as well. It's, it's just brilliant. Uh, you can see my overview for it for a bit more info and there'll be more coming out as we get closer to the game getting delivered it's uh, it's just fantastic hey benjamin oh thank you i'm glad you like all of the stuff hopefully i'll uh, continue to make more for all of these things that i'm excited about fingers crossed De definitely for eon's end and uh, dice theme park and the next one alphabetically is the the big one maybe if if i was properly ranking them it probably it, it would be number one let's be honest it's frost haven so this kind of astounds me that this is coming this year even, even though you know of course it is it it's gloomhaven's bigger brother <laughs> you know imagine gloomhaven had even more stuff in it and was more complex and came in a bigger box and was just stuffed full of ideas you know we assume you loved gloomhaven how would you like if we just turned everything up to 11 and just did everything we possibly could with all of the ideas that you're used to from uh, gloomhaven and um jaws of the lion even though you know jaws of the lion is jaws of the lion's your best bet at fantastic as it was that's your intro to to gloomhaven and then main gloomhaven has all of the retiring characters and stuff frosthaven Oh, so good. And yeah, we haven't even, like, we got we got very, very far in Gloomhaven. Don't get me wrong. We played it for at least a couple of months not playing anything else. And then we started a four-player campaign as well, and we were going to do them side by side, but the four-player one took over, and then babies were born, and the four-player campaign kind of stopped. And we've never gotten to Forgotten Circles, I don't think. But yes, still, with that admission that uh, Gloomhaven is my favorite game, but I haven't, I haven't played the end of it, I'm afraid. I've played uh, the Black Barrow a million times at this point. Uh, and, and yeah, the, the, the digital Gloomhaven works so well as well. And now that's got the main story in it that uh, at some point, like like all of these things are, one day I will do all of these things. Forgetting that you know, life happens, doesn't it? <laughs> and uh, takes your time away. But yeah, Frosthaven, I am looking forward to so, so much. As I said, Gl Gloomhaven's my favourite game, so any kind of sequel to it was going to get my uh, unending approval. I played, you know, a couple of uh, prototype scenarios that I had for, for my playthrough videos of it, and, you know, you, 
as all always with the the conditions and the asterisks you know i i did uh, a paid playthrough for it i rach and i have designed uh two scenarios for you know, there are many many guest designers uh but yeah rach and i are does this count as we're game designers now i think so <laughs> like uh, i don't know if it counts as you get in a board game geek credit but you can see our names for uh for two of the the quests that are coming in Frosthaven as well which i'm blown away by uh and yeah looking looking forward to seeing what people think of them and pl playing them ourselves and seeing what we think of them from just like a, a player perspective it's going to be so 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 good i hope of course but i am i'm supremely confident right based on all the hours that i have put into the other iterations of gloomhaven at this point i'm pretty confident that i'm gonna absolutely adore frosthaven and it's coming this year which it always it always kind of exists as this far off thing but no it's 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 coming this year lands of galzir i talked about earlier in terms of these storytelling exploration games full of um full of story and narrative choice but rather than it being this great big you know the world is ending you need to be this you know the 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 hero and save everybody what if you are just these kind of aspiring heroes often kind of failing and messing up uh, but trying to solve these problems in you you're, you're still in a big world like you can see like you're still in this great big map and it's a kind of game where there you can play it cooperatively you can play it competitively there is an end to your session it's not like, say, Sleeping Gods, where you can just save it at any time and uh, you just come back and it's one enormous thing. But Galzia does persist between your plays. You know, things that you have done will matter to the future of the world. You know, I had a, I had to get sent sent on to the next person. It's app supported as well. You know, I'm completely down with that, but I know that uh, might put some people off. I had a prototype that had a, a fair bit of content in it, but nothing compared to you know what the final game will have. And yeah, it, it was just so, so good. And I'll say that, you know, it, it's another thing that I did uh, a, a video for, but right the way back to, uh, you know, Dawn of Peacemakers, which is a, another scenario based game, but it's kind of, it's a kind of war game where we are, we are players watching bots play out a war game and meddling with it because we are peacemakers we are trying to stop these people getting involved with wars with each other it's it's so 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 good i can't uh emphasize enough i think it, it's pretty high up in my top co-ops of all time and probably should be on an underrated games list as well and also uh sammy designed dale of merchants all of the dale of merchants iterations as well which is uh one of the best deck builders so yeah, j just based on all of those things, I was up for Lands of Galzia, but you can see I, I did a I did a playthrough video for it, right? Yeah, you, you can see uh, some of the stories play out, even though they're only introductory ones. I yeah, I'm so up for this. This I've got really really high hopes. Hey, clever swine. Uh, is it a Care Bear scenario? Well, we'll, we'll cooperate in all of the things, but uh, I, I, I'm not going to reveal anything about the scenario. But yeah, it's. It's got some things I'm really, yeah, uh, I'm really looking forward to to people seeing. Yeah, everything's got to be a surprise, right? But yeah, it's Rach. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm really glad that Rach did it with me because you know she she kind of toned down the weirder aspects of it and made it like what what she did to it made it into a a scenario that you could imagine in a game rather than some of the silly things that I was doing. You need that balance, right? Oh, Chris, you back Galzir after the video. Oh, thanks. I'm glad. Well, I, I, <laughs> I'm sure Snowdale thanks you. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that I'm glad that you enjoyed it and liked the look of the game. And I hope for both of us that uh, that the final thing turns out well. On a kind of similar track, Mythwind is a game that uh, it, it, I, I imagine this will be kind of late in the year because it doesn't seem like it was very long since this was on Kickstarter. This is one that I have, well, I've group pledged, so I, I, I've backed in a way, which is, this is a cooperative game full of, you know, I don't want to say classes, but different kind of, different roles that we can play, different kinds of workers that all have a 
completely different way of playing. So for one player, it's a roll and write game. For one player, it's a polyomino game. Uh, I don't know about difference. Uh, so one player might be action selection. One is doing deck building. One is doing worker placement. It, it sounds so ambitious, this game. So this is another one that like, if they can pull this off, this is going to be amazing. Uh, but it is one where... I think the concern of people that I was kind of excited by this, but I did see some concerns that like, what is the kind of, how, how do you see the victory in this game? Where is the kind of end point? It is a kind of, it, it's a city building game. I don't know that it's like a, I don't think it's a big like story game, but we are trying to, you know, we're trying to progress our characters. We are trying to create a world around us. It sounds, yeah, it's, it's so ambitious and such an interesting idea. It's one where I had to, I, I, I need to see this for myself uh, because, yeah, it, it sounds so different and they said so, uh, they've got such lofty goals that if they can pull this off, I, I just love the idea, no matter what else was around it. I love the idea that it's why, I, I've never played it, but Merchant's Cove is similar, right? Where the different the different players are playing completely different kinds of games. We've all got a kind of communal board where you're trying to you're trying to ship things right in Merchant's Cove, but uh, everyone's actual player boards are, are have got completely different mechanics on them, and that's what really excites me about Mythwind as well. That I can be playing a deck building game while you're playing uh, a. a a polyomino game and it's the same game and it works together somehow and we're making some kind of story together it sounds so cool i'm really up for it now another one that i kind of i kind of learned about much too late but i know people are really excited for this that uh, that had backed it this is oathsworn into the deep wood another kind of i don't want to say it's it's not dungeon crawly but a kind of a kind of um you know, it's a sprawling map, tons of different characters and abilities. We've got, all the characters have got their own cards that behave in very different ways. We're going on big grand grand adventures and having fights, progressing our characters. Uh, it's got a cool sounding pushy look. Um, it's dice combat system, right? Yeah, exploding dice where uh, you can decide between hitting harder and potentially missing. Uh, it's got like Euro style uh, elements put into it as well, which I really like as well. Oh, Verdant. Verdant should be in the honourable mentions for sure. I don't know why I haven't put that in there. Yeah, you can check out my video for Verdant. It's it's one that, if I was allowed to just make top 10s infinitely big, all of those honourable mentions would be on there. I'm so excited for all of those things. I am going in um, I am going in alphabetical order. But this, this was like, I think it was a few years ago, right? This, this was on Kickstarter. And it's like finally delivering now. Look who pops up here two years ago. Look how excited he is by these enormous minis. So it's another one that like, I don't know, for, for all of my kind of Euroiness and depending on which day you catch me on, you know, being put off by dice and that kind of stuff, Dungeon Crawl kind of turned that around for me, especially like, yeah, well, I, I want for co-op in a lot of its forms. And we had a great time with Descent, which does have, you know, more dice manipulation than Descent used to have in it. Uh, really enjoyed Sword and Sorcery last year. Late comer to that. And uh, I've got um, Dungeons of Drunagore, is it? Uh, that I've got and I haven't played it yet. Uh, I'm up for my uh, my big exploration fighting games, Euthia, we did uh, quite recently, which is another... You know, these are all kind of very different aspects of a kind of loose world. But yeah, uh, from, from what little I've seen, like watch this video here, the, the Wise Guys video. Is it the Wise Guys video? No, this one here. Gems to 3D's video of uh, the training camp. It's kind of why he's excited about uh, Oathsworn. It got me really excited about Oathsworn as well. Maybe it was just a great video. But yeah, I'm, I'm up for it. Perseverance Castaway Chronicles is another one that like I think Paul mentioned this uh, back when uh, he was with us. And I know he's quite involved in this. He's He's got it right now, right? He's got an early copy and he's making a... Uh, a how to play video I think for it or playthroughs and stuff he's been involved the whole way so this is Mind Clash you know Tricarian um, Anachrony and it's got you know uh, Richard and Victor you know d designers of um, Tricarian and David Turchley designer of Anachrony as well as Thomas van der Ginst and Wolf Plank this is another kind of lush lavish enormous Euro game 
but we're on this island. We are discovering dinosaurs. Like I know that the you know, way back when I <laughs> I I was at an Essen. I think it would have been like 2019, right? The the last Essen that I was at. I know there was one in 2021, but I couldn't make it to that one unfortunately. I know that the game has changed a lot since it was on. You know, since David was telling me about it and exciting me about it. And it finally making it to Kickstarter, and I'm sure it's changed and evolved uh, in its production phase. But yeah, th there is, it's it's called like episodes one and two, right? There is an evolving thing. It starts out as a, I don't know, this stuff might have changed since he was telling me about it. And I've probably misremembered in the last uh, two uh, and a bit years. But the, the, the story as well as the mechanics of the game are evolving and being introduced. I just want a game that's full of these amazing dinosaur minis. That's what like that's what ten year old me would want more than anything in a game. Ten year old me would be putting this right at number one, regardless of wouldn't have any concept of what the game was about, but uh, just for having these uh, beautiful dinosaur minis in it. I would imagine that j just based on I got an anachronies like it, and it does say like it's a it's a four out of five weight. It's this is a heavier game, uh, which I imagine like what's Tricarian? Tricarian is a. I really want to play Tricarian again. Tricarian is a heavy. 4.22. Yeah. Tr Tricarian is a meaty game. And I would say Anachrony. It's not as heavy as that, right? Did they say Anachrony is 4.01? <laughs> this is really specific. It's a 4.01 on the weight scale. Uh, so about as heavy as Anachrony. So I wouldn't say. Yeah. Like. 30 odd year old me still wants dinosaur games. Uh, clearly. So yeah, e even if that's just what it was, even if it didn't have the kind of pet... No, this is a bit lighter than Tricarium. Well, I, I I kind of feel like Anachrony... I know it's got all the time travel stuff and there is a lot to think about and whether you're putting your workers in suits and all of that stuff, um, but... So Anachr according to Board Game Geek and the, the voting public, Anachrony's a 4.01 and this is a 4 on the weight scale. Although, you know, this can't have had many votes yet because it isn't out. So only people that have playtested it, and I suppose the company will submit a weight when they submit the game to Board Game Geek. So about as heavy as an acronym, apparently. But yeah, I uh, oh, it just it says right up here: a living dinosaur world in a series of mechanically evolving strategy games. There we go. Episode one's much lighter than Tricarian, and it ramps up from there. Yeah, I I am really just just for you know I have played. I think I did videos as well for I didn't do one for Perseverance, unfortunately. But I've done them for, you know, Tricarian and Anachrony's expansions in the past. Yeah, I, I'm really, really up for that. Triassic Terror. I need to look up my dinosaur games. Isn't there there's like a Jurassic... Isn't there like a Jurassic World version of Fireball, Fireball Island or something coming out at some point soon? But yeah, Mind Clash are amazing. They There's only those, like... Well, there's, there's um, the Numbskulls game as well. It was a bit kind of tricky. But in terms of Anachrony and Tricarian, they were amazing. They always have, you know, they always excel at uh, their component quality and production. I, uh, I've got really high hopes for Perseverance. Next up is a game that, d depending on how many of my videos you've seen, you've probably heard me banging on about this game a million times over the last few years. Seize the Bean. Seize the Bean is going to be great, everybody. And you may already have it. I know depending on, you know, if, if you were a backer or you were a pre-orderer, depending on which wave you had of that, uh, you, you may well be sitting right in front of your copy of Seize the Bean right now with your uh, lovely plastic milk cartons. And <laughs> look at that. And uh, actual beans and stuff and beautiful kind of pre-coffee uh, mug stained playmats. This is a deck building game with you know, a difference your decks in this game are your customers you are running coffee shops and throughout the game you will so if we look at or if there's just like a picture of just a player board over here you can see like the player board at the bottom down here that uh, you start you can pick any of these actions you will gain cards uh, throughout the game that get put next to these actions so that an action that might just get you a milk at the start of the game will now get you a milk and some beans and a scoop of this and some of these other resources and it will compound and expand or you might want to get new customers that want certain things you know you're all kind of you you want to get actions that will give you the resources you need to satisfy the customers that you have gained and the bonuses from those customers will combo in beautiful ways uh, and as well the thing that's like th this is what should give you hope about kickstarters like i know um, some people have um 
some people got very frustrated with Seize the Beam because it has been like it has been uh like four years i think i i did a video for it when it was originally on kickstarter where's where's tom does a video for it there he is look at that look at those glasses <laughs> four years ago there we go you can see my uh my original playthrough of that prototype way back when shaky cam blue cloth what's going on here uh, I, 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 as far as i know like for, for all intents and purposes it, it, a copy will be on its way to me at some point, but um, I think given the delays and them wanting to be completely thorough about things, they want to make sure absolutely everybody who backed it and uh, was involved in the Kickstarter gets their copies first before you know g before media and uh, other people get get one sent to it. I'm in the game as well. This is I think apart from yeah we. we we're in Frosthaven because we designed that scenario, but uh, I'm a card in the game as as well as like Sheriff Marty is on my shirt as well because it's back in the Sheriff Marty days. Uh, so one of the so this took a uh, what was I was trying to say this took a while to to come out as I say it, it's been uh, some years but part of that is because they crammed so many expansions and optional things into this game and you know play tested it all had all these various translations involved all at once and you know it's uh, i can only speak from an outside perspective but it's difficult getting things made and getting all of this stuff um sorted out never mind uh, with uh, current complexities adding on to it uh, but yeah it's out there in the world now copies will uh I, I i think we're we're not far off right just being able to order it and shops having it i think uh hopefully we're not very far off from me having it because there's also a solo mode with tons of difficulty levels as well as all the various modules and stuff that can be uh combined together a beautiful production so much packed in there and just you know with the just with the 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 prototype that i had Four years ago, the memory still lingers of how much we loved Seize the Bean. And uh, yeah, I, I can't cheerlead enough from it. <laughs> it's not shaky cam, it's too much coffee cam. Exactly. That That's the excuse for all of those days. Uh, hey, Muhab. Uh, Nightmare Cathedral by Borden Dice. I believe I have missed that. Let's, uh, let's segue. Have I spelled it wrong? It doesn't seem to be coming up. Has it just been announced or something and I've missed the, the news story on it? I can't see it coming up in the uh, Board Game Geek search. Also Terracotta from... That's not coming up either. Is my Board Game Geek search just broken? I don't know. We'll look at these things. Oh, Terracotta Army. I haven't seen that at all. Maybe there's a there's a newsletter I'm missing out on. Area influence. You represent talented craftsmen and artists laboring to build the wondrous assembly of statues. Collect resources. Oh, it sounds cool. Oh, it's not on Borgen Geek. There's just been a Facebook announcement. Okay. Yeah, I need to check that out then. We'll do another. We'll do another one with another hundred games. I could. There's a load of games that I could still talk about here. Here I'm cheating, and these are one entry, right? This is in the S's. This is Steffenfeld City Collection, which is another one that's been on a bit of a journey, hasn't it? Like th this was one where I can't remember which one. I was going to do a video for one of these, and the prototype just wasn't ready in time. So I still don't know what's been changed about this game. So Amsterdam is a reimplementation of the fantastic, the incredible Macau. One of Steffenfeld's best games, long, long, long out of print. When I got a copy, I'd say in about 2015, so you know, I, I was late to the party myself, it, it had been long out of print when I managed to get a hold of a copy. I think I have a Dutch copy that was like, you know, had a had a battered box and was like the last copy left uh, in a shop that, um, you know, I got, I pasted up, enjoyed many, many sessions of Macau. 
it's getting made available again by uh, by Queen Games. They're getting um, you know the 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 games are getting rebalanced, adding uh, some new extra things to them. So they've got some differences. It's not just going to be um, Macau. It's Amsterdam, as you can see. It says right there. <laughs> but yeah, I'm I'm really excited to uh, uh, to see what they have done to it and. It will be fantastic that people can get their hands on Macau again. And equally true for Hamburg, which re-implements Bruges, another game that has been... I mean, that's been long out of print, right? I was really, really lucky to get hold of a copy of uh, Bruges in English. I think German copies were a lot more plentiful, but it is a very text-heavy game. A lot of, uh, you know, it's a great multi-use card game, Bruges. I did a video for it, actually. And we were lucky that back when we had our local game store they had had a copy of the Bruges expansion for years that just nobody had bought because they couldn't get hold of the base game. So we managed to get that as well. And oh, it was so good. I think this implements all of that stuff together. So this brings, it's another one. Oh, it, it's rebalanced Bruges and brought all of this new stuff together. Um, Bruges, it's got a little bit of a mean streak. Well, more than a little bit. Uh, a lot more than Macau had. But uh, yeah. You, you can kind of choose to play it without. I don't know if Hamburg has lessened that or kept it just as it was. But yeah, there'll, there'll be some differences. They have been delayed, yes. I, I, I feel like it was a while ago where uh, we were going to do the videos for those things. And I think there's, there's like... This city collection is going to have new games in it as well as re-implementations, which um, are going to be coming at some point. You can play Macau on Yukata. Oh, cool. Wait, yeah, Marrakesh is one of the brand new ones, right? So I could be like, I, I feel like these ones will be delivered this year, right? But there are there are new entries to the city collection that are also getting on there. Oh yeah, Marrakesh and New York City. They're both new. A oh, New York City is Rialto. Oh right. Uh, so Rialto, I. I remember, like, it doesn't it? It had like a two-player variant. It's one that we didn't have for very long. I remember Rach really not enjoying Rialto, but I also don't remember that much about it anymore because of that. They have like a two-player variant. I remember white cubes and stuff. I know that's not much to go on, right? <laughs> oh, it's that game with the white cubes. But yeah, but it'd be cool to try that again. I haven't got as strong or fond memories of uh, of Rialto as I had Macau and well, the last game spoiled for you. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I still have Macau. I did still have Bruges. Honestly, I kind of, when we were moving house and I just had to cut down the games, just had no choice, had to, and kind of knowing that um, the new edition was coming out, I did sell Bruges. But I kept Macau. Because, yeah, out of everything, as, as fantastic as Bruges is, it's got that mean streak in it that... Uh, I would prefer not to be in it. But hey, finally, here we go. All this time later. How, how long does it take me to talk about 10 games? Weather Machine. I did a video for... I did two, actually. I did a playthrough for the two-player mode with Little Glass Marty. And I did a, a digital playthrough for the prototype of the solo mode by David Tortzi. Did a fantastic one for Kanban EV. And now he has done one for Weather Machine. Does a great job of replicating the, the normal player. But yeah, just as, as I was saying with um, if the next one, Inventors, comes to Kickstarter this year, I'm always up for a big heavy Vital Lacerda game. They do, like especially on Mars, kind of tests the, the limits of my brain power <laughs> and goes beyond them. But um, yeah, Weather Machine was just right at that kind of uh, top end of... I don't know what I'm doing to suddenly seeing the light and everything just uh, works out beautifully. Again, lovely, lavish, deluxe production. It had to get sent on, but I had a prototype that's pretty much what the final thing would look like with the beautiful wooden pieces and dual layered boards and things. You know, fantastic art and design by Ian O'Toole, as always. You know, all of these things back to um, the reprints of Vino's, back to the gallerist. Everyone has uh, just been absolutely fantastic. And yeah, just any of these big box meaty Vital Lacerda games. Right for me. This is up there though. I would say like it, it's surely not as heavy as on Mars, right? 
Although on Mars, his expansion as well should be delivering this year. I didn't touch on expansions in this, uh, but um, yeah, on Mars, his co-op expansion kind of spreads out some of that weight. Yeah, on Mars, 4.6. Like on Mars, I'm, I'm pretty sure is by far the, the heaviest game that I still have. And the new solo mode for on Mars as well is uh, more manageable, I think. What did I say? Like the Gallerist is an easy one. Lisboa, I kind of think of as heavy. 4.57 for Lisboa. Oh right. Well, this is all. This is all people voting and stuff for it, isn't it? And everyone's got a kind of different perspective on things. But the gallerist is. I would say, yeah, the gallerist. Well, for for me, the gallerist was the the easiest one to learn and get to grips with. But um, Rachel always says Kanban is the easiest for her. But maybe that's uh, because it's the first one. And when I used to kind of you know long before making videos for games, used to just watch loads of videos and learn the game in advance so I could uh, easily explain them all. Yeah, it, it kind of sits. Uh, it's, <laughs> I suppose it's another one where this will only have the person submitting the game and playtesters voting on the weight of it. I think. But yeah, the Gal I think Kanban's still my favorite multiplayer, even including Weather Machine. Galar is still my favorite solo, even though it's a different kind of solo, right? Vital solos uh, are more, especially in uh, Galarist, they're more having a kind of very very easily controlled it's not even a bot it's just there is a lacerda meeple in the gallerist that will move clockwise one space every turn so you can see where it's going and what it's going to do and plan around the game accordingly but you need to meet goals and you need to meet goals against the bots as well it's just that um david uh, tortsy's solo modes are all about trying to replicate the feel the experience of playing against players in the multiplayer game and uh, yeah, I only had the prototype for a very brief period. It was a very last minute doing um, those videos. But yeah, I would say that his solo mode was very comparable to playing the, the two player game anyway, which is uh, what I played it as. But there we go. There are just 10 games, right? <laughs> there are my uh, most anticipated games of 2022, apart from all the ones that I've forgotten and have apparently missed out on announcements for. Uh, yeah, I need to get looking at the Nightmare Cathedral and things like that. And I'm sure I'll see them pop up as they go into the Board Game Geek um, database. So yeah, tell me what I've missed. I'm sure I've even even with all of this stuff and people telling me in the chat now, tell me in the comments later on what else I've forgotten because I'm sure there are, well, games get added to this database all of the time. I'm sure things uh, slip my notice. You can guarantee that. I'll be back. Thank you for joining me for all of this, especially you know, sticking it all the way. There's a lot of games here, but... Like, I hope you're as excited about me for maybe not these particular games, but yeah, there's some fantastic things on the way in 2022. And that's with knowing that, you know, loads of this stuff, especially if you're kind of Eurocentric, a lot of it gets released at uh, Essenspiel, so doesn't really get announced until close to that or maybe summertime, things like that. So just with like, it's, it's kind of Kickstarter heavy, this list, right? Because that's what we know. And you know, th those, nates, those dates are um, a bit in the air because of uh, delays and all of that stuff. But yeah, um, there's, there's, there's exciting stuff that with most of the games I imagine for 2022 not even announced. And Kickstarters and stuff will uh, be coming up at the last minute. Uh, I didn't, generally, I, I did mention it when you, when you mentioned it. But yeah, that, that should have been on my um, honorable mentions list for sure. You can see my... Um, was it an overview video? Yeah, it was an overview video of uh, Verdant. But uh, yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, it fits in right in between uh, Calico and uh, Cascadia complexity-wise, I think. Looks absolutely beautiful. More gorgeous Beth Sobel art. You know, flat out, I've just got it. So they, they, are, they are very different games in terms of the actual puzzle that they're doing. But um, yeah, in this kind of it must be this collaborative design thing that they've got on right where the the team is involved um like you can see this this is credited to the team right it's so good that's why that um fit to print the upcoming kickstarter yeah it's um <laughs> despite all of the other things that i'm excited about for it just it, it's oh, oh it's flat out games it's it's a it's another um it's another thinky filler from flat out yeah i'm in uh regardless of it being uh oh it, it's uh it's woodland creature newspaper themed Oh, I've been waiting for a game just like that. Uh, but yes, Verdant as well. Thank you very much for joining me for this. 
I will timestamp the video at <laughs> some point soon, so you don't necessarily have to uh, look through them all. But hey, why not look through them all? There's loads and loads and loads of great games. Let me know what I've missed and uh, what I should be keeping my eyes on. Hopefully, all of these and more will come to the channel. I'm sure, you know, you can't play every game as... Uh, as I have to be reminded constantly. <laughs> uh, but yeah, loads and loads of games coming out. Loads to look forward to. Thank you very much for being here and uh, spending some time with me and having a chat about all of these games and things. Follow us, subscribe and like and all of those things that algorithms like you to do. I like you to do them as well. But, uh, you know, algorithms demand it. Patreon.com forward slash Slicker Drips is where you can support me and enable me to have more and more time to be able to do all of these games. Thank you so much to everyone uh, that supports me on there. Hey, let's, uh, as Paul said earlier, let's let, let's march on to, to 200 patrons. That would be amazing. And uh, yeah, let's do this even more in 2022. Thanks, Marty, for sticking with us. Having another clean. It's, it's time for another clean. And uh, yeah, I had great fun. Thanks a lot, everyone. I will see you tomorrow. I think it's um, it's 2 p.m. GMT, right? We're going to play some Solo Boon Lake, which I would show you, but it's underneath a pile of games. Thank you very, very much for being here, everyone. I will see you very, 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 very soon. Bye. Bye. Now I need that hand to click the, the button to go on. <laughs> Bye, everyone. <laughs>